Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully, you're joining me when this show goes live on Sunday, each and every Saturday and Sunday, bringing you our Cabral house calls where we answer all of your community's questions or all of our community's questions each and every Saturday and Sunday. I love being able to see what's going on in the community and how I might be able to help in any way. So this, uh, as I always say, is me opening up a giant uh, Word document, although I use a Mac, so on Pages document, of all of the questions that have come in um, over the last few months. And what I do is I simply answer them in the order that they come in. So today we're starting with uh, questions from 623. So if we do the math, let's see where we're at right now. This show is debuting. It's episode 2424. If you want to read along with the questions, um, stephencabral.com forward slash 2424. That's fun. Um, so you can check that out right now and read along with the questions if you'd like. This one's debuting three months later on uh, 925. So we are 12 weeks behind. That seems to be about right for us, 12, 13 weeks. So I just want you to know that any question that you need answered faster, I would definitely reach out to cabralsupportgroup.com with a health-based question. And uh, if it's an order-based question, support at equa.life. Okay, let's get into it. Alicia is up first and it says, hi, Dr. Ral, I hope you're doing well. My question is about adrenal soothe supplements. I learned from your podcast the, that it's best to take it at night or at lunch and then again after dinner. My highest stress is always in the morning in first half of the day. Is it okay to take adrenal food at breakfast? Or would that slow me down too much and make me feel a bit sluggish during the busiest time of my day? Big thank you for your amazing work. Thank you, Alicia. Appreciate that. Um, so... How adrenal soothe is typically used, it's used two, two to three capsules with dinner. That's how most people use it, okay? So what does it do? Well, it contains phospholocerine, it contains ashwagandha, it contains L-theanine, so it contains products that naturally knock down cortisol levels. And if you knock down cortisol levels, well, then you're gonna be less stressed and you're gonna be able to get into a deeper level of sleep, all right? So that's the goal. Um, however, when someone runs what's called the stress mood and metabolism test and they have elevated levels of cortisol all day long, well, all bets are off because we're working on a bio-individuality-based issue, meaning like this person as an individual has high cortisol levels all day long. So what do we do? Well, we can do two capsules at breakfast, two capsules at lunch, and two capsules at dinner, and that's okay too. Nothing wrong with that. Now, Alicia's saying, I have my highest stress in the morning. All right, and she's worried like, hey, will it make you too sluggish? Well, what it does is if you're really amped up, it just helps bring you back down to normal. They're adaptogens, it helps you bring down a baseline. So what I would recommend is this. Um, you could do one at breakfast, one at lunch, and two at dinner, or two to three at dinner, depending on how your sleep is at night. Then if you feel like, well, it's not quite enough for me, I feel like I need more, okay. Then you could try two at breakfast, but you'll have already known after using it for three to five days whether you need to use more. So you can always start with less and then add more as needed. Hopefully that's helpful. And then Alicia, I always recommend complementing it with something like full spectrum magnesium because your body will use magnesium to calm the sympathetic nervous system and those herbs will work specifically on the cortisol as well. All right? All right. And uh, full spectrum magnesium can be used one, two, or three capsules at a time depending on what you need. Anonymous is up. Anonymous says, are there any herbs, supplements, et cetera, that you know that definitely cause miscarriages? Not simply herbs or supplements that are recommended to not use during pregnancy out of caution, but herbs or supplements that have an extremely high correlation and possible causation with miscarriages specifically. Okay, Anonymous, um, uh, you, I don't know what the question, I know the question is specifically asking, do I know anything that definitively causes miscarriages? And so my honest opinion is no, I don't know of any herb or supplement that causes miscarriages. Um, at all. But like you said, uh, cautionarily, um, I do not have women use any herbs in my practice 
uh, while pregnant. And that is simply because it could potentially lead to an earlier term pregnancy, um, and, and we don't want that. So that's that's what I do, and, and so no, I don't know specifically any herbs. I've never even heard of an herb that would cause a miscarriage. Um, I just know that we don't use herbs during pregnancy. Okay, Angela is up next. Angela says, my 22-year-old daughter was diagnosed with pars uh, planitis, or planitis, uh, when she was 10, which is a disease of the eye that is characterized by inflammation of the narrowed area between the colored part of the eye and the uh, choroid. Um, as the condition advances, cataracts, retinal detachment, uh, floating spots, blurred vision, dark spots, macular edema may develop. She has been seen one of the best doctors at Emory Children's Hospital in Atlanta. She gets steroid injections um, and or a cryo procedure done once or twice a year. Her doctor had always predicted that she would grow out of this in her early 20s, but that's not happening. Her doctor is now recommending that she start either Humira or methotrexate. Uh, which is what I'm taking. I was diagnosed with RA in 2004, and she was tested for that recently as well, but found that she does not have RA. I've been following you for several months now. I've done the 21-day detox. We're in the big five labs, plus the stool test. Had my two-hour consult last month with one of your IHPs, and I'm working through all of my protocols now. The last thing I want is for her to get on these meds, which I'm trying to desperately get off of. Just wondering if you have knowledge of this and what you recommend. Well, um, I have some knowledge of this. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at all in this area. I would certainly not do that. But I've worked with so many um, eye-based issues, skin-based issues, and inflammatory issue, which which is what this is as well. So what can I tell you? Um, what I would say is, again, this is something I look at as a serious health-based condition. And again, I cannot provide you with any medical advice, medical diagnosis, treatment plans, or medical cures. Uh, what I do is exactly what you did. I ran the big five, Okay. And then I run the bacteria and parasite stool test. I do this for all autoimmune-based issues. And the reason is, is that every autoimmune issue has an underlying root cause, so much so that conventional medicine even admits it now. And I'm going to give you a podcast to check out. You probably already did, but it came out about a week or two ago, and um, it was called The Root Causes for Autoimmune Disease. It was episode 2407. I've done many, many shows on autoimmune disease. I'll probably do a course on autoimmune disease in the future. But the bottom line is this. Autoimmune diseases, almost every single one, there is an issue with uh, gut permeability. Antibiotics were taken earlier in life. Uh, or, you know, there, again, there's so many other factors, alcohol, birth control, stress, poor food combinations, food sensitivities, glyphosate, et cetera. But that, that's what we need to do. So we need to get rid of the heavy metals in the body. We need to shore up the gut, get rid of the parasites, get rid of the candida, get rid of the bacterial overgrowth, get rid of the H. pylori, seal up the gut wall. All right, that's first and foremost. We need to reduce stress levels. I know easier said than done, but for me, if you combine stress and you combine gut issues, it's a recipe for autoimmune. So now you have the genetic factors, so that's obviously, so do I. Um, I also had this when I was younger, I don't anymore. So I know there's hope for you, and I know there's hope for your daughter. Hopefully, you don't have to be on these biological drugs for too much later, uh, too much longer. Um, and but that is exactly what I would do. Twenty-one day detox, just like you did it. You're doing it by the book, all right? By the book, six to twelve months. I know it's not overnight, but that's typically like don't don't think it's going to change in a month, right? So we can if if I mean you've been on this now for what eighteen years. So um, if someone recently has autoimmune based issues, uh, three to six months, we might be able to help the person, uh, for decade plus. Yeah. It might take four to six months, uh, maybe longer for, for harder cases, but you'll get there. No doubt about it. Uh, keep on keeping on. All right. Mallory's up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. I thought of one more question to ask you after writing in last week. I done your mold protocol and I felt better fairly quickly. I do, however, still see biofilm in my stool every day after slowly detoxing for about a year now. Could what appears to be biofilm in my stool actually be resulting of something else, such as a supplement? Are you able to say if this is my body still detoxing? I've been getting what I believe are Herx-type reactions about once a month. I'm wondering if this is more likely because of detoxing too quickly, or if I'm just catching more colds because my immune system is down. I use GI detox, which I realize is charcoal-based, as I have... As I heal, could my body become less sensitive to charcoal binders in general? Could you tell me if it's possible to heal from mold toxicity without any binders at all? Can citrocytal help? Lastly, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's shortly after I got my mold labs back. Have you seen individuals get rid of Hashimoto's by detoxing from mold? So sorry for all the questions. I understand you cannot give medical advice. Unfortunately, have not been able to get in touch with any other professionals that are experienced as you in this my specific diseases. All right. Okay, well, happy to help. And I can tell you for sure... 
our Equalife team can help you with this, and so can the integrative health practitioner level twos. Because, so um, what helps with mold? Okay, so what helps in the short term is the mold protocol. So typically people are doing the CBO protocol, then the mold protocol. Um, but at the same time, they're doing things to boost the immune system and get their immune system back in better working order because that's what's ultimately going to be able to eradicate the mold from your body. You certainly want to shore up your gut function. There's no doubt about that. That's why we a lot of times do the CBO protocol. Um, are you seeing biofilms every day in your stool for a year? I don't know. I mean, it's possible, but unlikely. It's unlikely. It could be um, I don't know the products you're taking. Like I really, I just don't know everything that you're taking. Is it something in the supplements that is a coagulant that's it's almost like a gel substance, which is very possible. If you're using gelatin-based capsules, maybe you're seeing the gelatin actually. Um, it's so rare that that would happen, but it's certainly possible. So let me move to the next part of your question on Hashimoto's. Well, Hashimoto's is, again, an autoimmune issue. So most likely it has its roots in a gut-based dysfunction, food sensitivity, heavy metal, HPA access, adrenal-based issue, stress, um, and potentially more. So we always work under the same exact way. I would absolutely run the big five plus the bacteria and parasite stool test if you're able to. If not, run the starter kit plus the stress mood and metabolism and really get to work right away on all the imbalances. Because again, Hashimoto's is multifactorial. I mean, it really is. There's not one thing for Hashimoto's. And actually, recently I did a podcast for Hashimoto's, um, and I'll share that with you right here. Um, that was episode 2407, but also I did one specifically on iodine. Let's see here. Let's see here. Well, if I ever can't find a show, what I would do, oh, there it is, it's 2391. But you can always ask for shows too if you can't find them at cabralsupportgroup.com. All right, so 2391 and then 2407 are your first podcast to check out. And then I have a whole course on how to heal your thyroid. And that's at stephencabral.com forward slash courses. All right, so hopefully that was helpful, Mallory. Last question of the day. I think it's the last question. One, two, three, four, five. Not so fast. This is the fifth question. All right. So this is from uh, Jenna. Jenna's saying, I'm writing on behalf of my mom who's been diagnosed with fibro, fibromyalgia. And it's mainly concentrated on her leg muscles. They are constantly achy, especially at night, and hurt even more when she lies down on them. It's like the nerves are sensitive to any pressure. She has done two labs through Equalife, an HTMA, and an Omega. The HTMA shows calcium and magnesium through the roof and an elevated mercury. She has amalgams but won't get them out. The Omega test was normal. She supplements. What's your next step in this scenario? All right, great question. So, there are many things um, when you have fibromyalgia. So by the way, I had fibromyalgia from about 17 years old to about 24 years old. It wasn't fun. Mine was mainly in my abdomen, sometimes my legs, but mainly my abdomen and, and uh, you know, a little bit in my elbow and et cetera. But anyway, fibromyalgia is real. They didn't think it was real 30 years ago, um, but certainly it is. It's just difficult to pinpoint and it can move. Why can it move? Well, it's really an inflammatory order, a disorder. So fibromyalgia is basically saying someone has um, an inflammatory issue that's affecting a lot of times the soft tissue of the body. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means it has an underlying root cause. So if it has an underlying root cause, what's the underlying root cause? Mine was my um, immune system was imbalanced, um, namely my adrenal-based issues, and I had to fix those. So I fixed that along with my gut, and then I got rid of my fibromyalgia. So we need to figure out what's causing your mom's fibromyalgia, food sensitivities, uh, poor diet, detox, metals. She obviously, she clearly has a calcium magnesium imbalance. Um, whoever you worked with on that, so again, it should be an equal life coach, they would have told you if magnesium supplementation is uh, warranted, because if so, that could greatly help this issue. But again, I, I can't comment on a lab that I never saw. So I want to share that with you. Um, I'm glad that she's supplementing with omegas. If she's, if she's able to do a 21-day functional medicine detox, maybe that would be a great place to get started. I want to make sure that she is moving her body. I know it's difficult sometimes, but get her walking a little bit, work on circulation. Uh, and there's so much that she could do. She could use circulatory-based herbs, maybe like a cayenne. Again, I can't make that recommendation because I don't know if she's on blood thinners, right? Um, she could use things like ginger tea. Um, so there's so much that she could do. So keep on down the path. Keep exploring. Use an infrared sauna or sauna. Go to stephencabral.com forward slash resources for all those uh, recommendations that I use as well. All right? So hopefully that's helpful. 
All right. Um, last question is from Stephen. Stephen with a V. Hey, Doc, what are your thoughts on Aquapure? Apparently, it uses regular tap water and a small amount of salt to create a powerful cleaning solution that removes pesticides, bacteria, and contaminants. It claims to get rid of more than 99% of pesticides, but not sure if this is legit. I have actually never heard of Aquapure. Um, I usually don't like thing, look things up on the show uh, just because I just want to be fair to everybody, but it's our last question of the day. I'm looking up Aqua Pure right now, and um, oh, it's a water filtration system. You know what? I'm going to do a water filtration system in the future, so please do wait for that. I will look into Aqua Pure, no doubt about it. So I'll look into that and, and look at toxicity levels or if it's clean or what goes into it. For all my water filters that I use right now in my life, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Stephen, I, I, I have not forgot about this question. I will follow up with you. I'll do a show on water filters. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you tuning in today. Take care. Check in tomorrow on our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Talk with you then. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.